Hello friends and welcome. Today we are doing a tier list on the neutral items. Now that you get five random items to pick from, I think it's important to know which ones are considered good so that you can then maximize your early game or you know whatever stage of the game you're in. This video, we're gonna focus on tier one and tier two. All games pretty much reach these tiers. And I think there's the, the most generic choices to make here. And that's why it's easier to compare items directly from tier three onwards. Maybe I'll do a separate video on that. Um, but I think it becomes a, a lot more specific to what hero you're playing and what heroes you're playing against. Uh, it becomes about adapting to that very specific game. And you might need something like cast range or survivability. And so it's kind of hard to rate those against each other since it, it's so situation specific. But these first two, uh, the game tends to be more general at that point, And so it's easier to compare them. Disclaimer here at the start, it's a little hard to compare these. I did go through a lot of high level pubs, pro matches and see what they picked, but I can't see what options they were given. So sometimes, you know, maybe they took shovel. Do they actually think shovel's the best or was shovel just the best of the five random options they got? Um, it's difficult to say. So this is a lot of just what I commonly see uh, so that whatever their options were, they thought this item was relatively good. And along that lines, this is also geared toward higher level play, where the meta leans itself towards a certain way, and so certain neutral items are then good. Uh, the lower you go, the less relevant it is. And I do want to say here that you will see pretty much every neutral item taken. It, uh, it may not be as common as another neutral item, but everything offers something relatively unique, um, some, I, I guess that's not fully true. Some are kind of similar, but uh, most items have something unique from each other. And so if you think in this given situation, hey, I think this makes a lot of sense for what I need, then go ahead, take it, try it out. And I think it can work. Uh, there's no neutral item that is so bad that it's just like, just literally never take this item. With that out of the way, let's get started on the tier one items. So occult bracelet is probably your best generic item in the game right now. It just has so much value in this item. It's definitely gonna get nerfed. You have four all stats. Uh, no one's really going to complain about that. You got 10% magic resistance, which in this current meta of a lot of early active gameplay, there's a lot of powerful spells in the early game. And so now you're just less likely to die to any of that uh, and prevent yourself from being killed, the enemy snowballing, all of that. So that's really nice. And then this mana passive, uh, everyone needs mana to some degree pretty much. So as you are getting involved in fights, you're the aggressor, you want mana to keep going. So this is useful. If you are just like jungle farming, you're some carry, right? You're gonna be tankier to ganks. And then as the creeps hit you back, you're getting mana regen. So then you can use that to farm faster. Uh, there's so much value here. Like if you think about it, Four all stats is a crown, that's 450. 10% magic resistance is a cloak, that's 400 gold. And then if you're at 2.5 mana regen, that is better than a void stone. So there's just so much value in the occult bracelet that pretty much every single hero in every single role finds value from the occult bracelet. And that's why you'll see it so often. Fairy's trinket is also an S tier item in my opinion, even though it's much less common than occult bracelet. Mainly mid laners like this item, anyone who uses spells a lot. So sometimes you'll see like Skyrath and Pugna actually take this as well, uh, techie supports. Uh, but it's really anyone who's going to cast a lot of spells and those spells are very powerful. And someone like Storm Spirit likes this item so much, I have seen them keep it through tier two items and then even tier three on occasion. Like just maybe it's the options they get, but they, they just think that Fairy's Trinket is still better than all of those items. So to me, that makes it an S tier item, probably needs a nerf, but it is pretty specific. Only certain heroes really like Fairy's Trinket. And if you're not a, a very high damage, frequent spellcaster, then you're not gonna take Fairy's Trinket in a lot of cases. Faded Brooch is my last S tier item, mainly because of this move speed. The map is a lot bigger now. Everyone is running around trying to get stuff done. And so just getting to be faster. Yes, you can buy a Wind Lace, but maybe you'll buy a Wind Lace and get this Faded Brooch because you can't stack Wind Laces. Uh, and then you're just as fast as you possibly could be to go from gank to gank to gank to pick up wisdom runes, bounty runes, power runes. There's so much moving now potentially. Uh, so if you don't get uh, maybe the occult bracelet and you wanted that one, this is a great follow-up as well. And even if you have the occult bracelet, if you think you need to move around more than like the actual fights and mana, like say you're tanky enough already, you think, uh, it's just about being in the right fights, being all over the map, then the faded brooch can be very good as well. Moving down to the A tier, I actually had arcane ring as an S tier item 
uh, earlier when I was going to make this video, but then there was some patches that changed some stuff, and as time moved on, people started to favor the Occult Bracelet over the Arcane Ring, but you'll still see this item picked up. And I think what made it really good, uh, since the, the neutral token system got put in, is that in the past, you could only have one Arcane Ring, and it was, it was solid. It was eight Intelligence, two Armor, right, and a nice active to give mana, um, but you could only have one Arcane Ring. Now, you can have multiple Arcane Rings. So if you have a group of heroes, especially a lot of spellcasters, who want to play together uh, you got like two supports and the offlaner, two supports mid, something like that, right? And it's like, we go, we gank, okay, cool, we got a kill, now we have no mana, we can't do anything. Oh, wait a minute, arcane ring, arcane ring, arcane boot, suddenly all three of us have tons of mana. Or you gank, you walk up to someone, pop your stuff, walk away, right? Because it's an active, um, they get all the mana, you don't have to spend all your time next to them. It's just really useful to keep everyone on your team topped up. And I think another nice thing about arcane ring is that even as you go into the tier two items, you can just keep your arcane ring in the backpack, uh, use your two, tier two item that you you know is better, but then you need mana, you swap the arcane ring in, you activate it, you swap it back out. Um, I, I think that's nice. A lot of these other neutral items, once you get a better one, you just drop them and you never go back to them. But I think the arcane ring uh, has that value that you could keep for uh, the future as you struggle with mana, you know, and the game keeps going, it's always there. On that same train of thought, we have the trusty shovel. I think this is really good for supports. For cores, I think it's pretty hard because you're gonna fill up all your slots, right, uh, with items, but supports, we're poor, we don't have anything. So we get space for all these mangoes and these flasks. And again, uh, you can keep the trusty shovel for the future, continue to dig things up. Even as you get your tier two, tier three items, you can use the trusty shovel as much as you want. Uh, I think this uh, kobold is currently underutilized. The stacking got buffed, right? But there's so many objectives, it's hard for supports to find time to stack sometimes. But when you dig up a kobold, they last long enough that you can just set them over to a camp and stack that camp while you're off doing something else. The kobold does have the uh, prospector's aura that increases your GPM, but uh, once you pick up boots, you're typically faster than the kobold. So a lot of times you're trying to like run around and the kobold gets left behind. And so you don't really get the, the full aura anyways. Uh, so I think um, using it to stack actually is a really solid use of it while you're off doing something else or you use it to scout. You go find like the bounty runes, power runes, you can deny enemy wisdom runes with a kobold. You can do a lot of stuff with that. Um, so I think this one's really nice for support, but uh, not really any of the core roles. Spark of Courage was originally down here in like the D tier, but since it got buffed in 7.33C, it now gives 18 damage and that is a ton. So you'll see uh, carries mostly take this item if they are farming through right clicks. If they are using mana to farm, then you're more likely to see them take Occult Bracelet, which will give them some damage through the stats, uh, but mainly it's that mana regen that they're always getting while farming. Um, but if you are not really doing that, you're like some PA trying to farm through like up to her battle fury. And then like when you have the battle fury, you want to like as much cleave damage as possible. Then spark of courage can be really good. Not that PA isn't popular in the meta at all, but in your pub game, she is, you know, so uh, she's an example of someone who will take spark of courage because 18 damage is a ton. It's the most you can get from a tier one item. And it even it even outscales some of the tier two items in terms of the raw damage it gives. The, the seven armor is nice uh, once, when you get ganked, when people are going on you. It's not really why you're picking the item, but it is convenient. Uh, it's, it's mainly for the damage. So if you want the damage, this is your best bet. Then we have our discount blink tumblers toy. It's still really solid for anyone who wants tumblers toy. So it gives 200 mana, uh, which is great in this current meta. And then you've got the vault active every 15 seconds. You can kind of like launch yourself forward. And like I said, this is just the discount blink. If you are a hero like Earthshaker who wants to get there, but you know, you don't have it at the early game at seven minutes into the game, then you can use tumblers toy. You can use it to jump up and down terrain, things like that. There's a lot of uses for it. Uh, and especially if you need that boost to your mana pool, this this is great. 200 mana is a ton. Now down in B tier, Pig Pole actually provides the most all stats you can get from a neutral item in the tier one category. So if that's all you want, then this is still probably your best bet. Um, but uh, a lot of times you want something like mana, move speed, like a mix of things. And that's why usually these other items are a little better. Um, but here's like Void Spirit maybe who just want the, the extra damage you get from all stats and you know you just you get value from all the different stats as well then that's nice. The active kind of cool it speeds you up so again on this huge map you get to move around a little faster but uh, it does cost mana and it has 25 seconds so a lot of times people aren't using it to just move around the map it's mainly when they are running away from the enemy team they'll you know pick out and then try to get away but 
uh, I don't know, the, the extra value you get from some of these others, you know, this is mainly just like, okay, six stats. This one is like, well, I got four stats, which is, you know, two thirds of six, and I get magic resistance, and I get mana regen. That's why a cult bracelet just overall feels a lot better than pig bull seeds of serenity is another item that got buffed it now provides three hp regen to the hero holding this and i think that does help the item if you have arcane boots for example and you pick up seeds of serenity you're probably going to be okay topped up on all your uh all your regen needs but many people are choosing to double dip in the mana category instead of health and get like arcane boots plus one of these mana items, all that, because then you can do something like, you know, uh, drop this and then arcane boots to pick this back up for extra efficiency. You can like uh, do the same thing with arcane ring, but then you have like double active. You get the mana regen from this because uh, the more mana you have, there's so many like good spells right now and the, the most popular heroes that you get to use all your spells and get stuff done. And Seeds of Serenity just often doesn't feel as good that's not to say it's not picked up uh, especially against heroes like venomancer viper a lot of heroes who have like casual damage seeds of serenity is kind of useful because you get to drop it you get 10 hp regen for 14 seconds so it'll help heal you up but that's also part of the issue is that it is 14 seconds you have to sit still and get that hp regen and if you really needed hp regen Maybe it's easier to be, take a trusty shovel, dig up a salve, and then use it on someone, pass it to someone, and they have much less time. They're able to move while they're being salved, all of that. I know this is like the AoE and everything, but everyone's trying to move around, and having to sit still for 14 seconds just doesn't feel that great. Having said that, you will see this item picked up, so it's not like I, I am shit-talking a lot, but like it, it's fine so long as you need the HP regen and you need 150 health, which is quite a lot, actually. Uh, so if you're just trying to tank up and be healthy, then that's good. You know, against a hero like Bloodseeker, you can't be low, then it's nice. If not, you know, maybe these other items are a little better. Then we've got Lance of Pursuit, another item that provides 200 mana, which is quite nice for a lot of heroes. But the reason you'll pick Lance of Pursuit is because you are looking to play aggressive and you are going to do a lot of right clicks. So someone like Bounty Hunter, uh, Wind Ranger, Pango, the people who kind of like run down other heroes. That's when the passive is going to come into play because when you attack them from behind, you will slow them and you will deal bonus damage. So if you're not looking to play aggressive, then that's not going to come into play at all and you're not going to take this item. You're going to take one of the other mana items. Uh, but if you are the one looking to be aggressive and heroes have to run away from you, right? They can't just stand and fight you because if they stand and fight you, then you don't get this either. They have to want to run away from you. Then in that case, Lance of Pursuit can be pretty good. Then finally, we have Broom Handle and Duelist Glove. And it's kind of funny because Broom Handle actually was considered one of the better items for carries back when you didn't have a choice. But now that you can choose to have multiple copies of any of these items, a lot of carries are picking that instead uh, because like a hero like Terra Blade, oh yeah, actually just getting to use more illusions is pretty nice. So I'm going to take, you know, a cult bracelet or arcane ring instead is going to help me tank up. It's got the stats, the, the armor and damage and attack range. They're all generally useful. I still see heroes like anti-mage pick it up. Um, but I, I honestly think it's because they didn't get the choice of spark ring because a lot of a lot of carries don't really need more armor. And although 50 attack range is cool, uh, a lot of carries are just spending that 10 to 17 or sorry, 7 to 17 minute mark farming creeps. And you don't really care about extra attack range in that time. So if you could just get more damage from spark of courage or you get more like spells to farm faster with any of these, uh, a lot of carries are taking those instead. But I don't know. I don't know if they just didn't have other options or what. I do occasionally see broom handle. It's just not very often. I also rarely see duelist glove, but I think it's best if you are a, a, a core who wants to fight early and you primarily do right clicks so that you'll get some of that damage and you'll get 20 attack speed. When you have both, it's a pretty solid item. But the issue is just like if you think about carries, they aren't getting involved in fights typically. They're farming. And so then they never really get 20 attack speed. In that case, what is 10 damage? Like, okay, eight damage, just a little less, but I actually get armor and some attack range. Or like, okay, I'll get 18 damage instead, you know? Or I'll get like six damage, but other stats as well. Uh, so I think if you're just gonna farm, Duelist Glove is not very good, but if you're getting involved early, someone like mm, Muerta maybe, right, gets some damage, and then she gets like some attack speed for all her stuff as well. Uh, someone like Slark uh, gets some value out of this. 
but many of those early fighting cores also kind of like to just tank up so they don't die while getting involved and they stay topped up on mana. Uh, so I don't know. I, I rarely see these two items. And if I do see them, it's on carries typically. If you're a support player, you're probably never going to take either of these. Moving into the tier twos, Philosopher's Stone is really good because it carries its value beyond that 10 minute window of tier two items because you can keep it. Uh, and anytime you're dead, you swap it in. Anytime you're walking around the map not doing anything, you swap it in. You get into a team fight, you, you know, you're getting close, you pick your tier three item, you use that. You win the team fight, okay, swap it back out. Philosopher's Stone, you know, head over, go ward, stuff like that. Uh, it's typically gonna be on supports. And a couple core heroes who use a lot of spells like Tinker rather than right clicks. Uh, a common mistake from lower level core players it's like oh I'll use it i'll get gpm and like how much is 30 attack damage really it it really does add up when you're farming through right clicks and so it would be better to amplify your right clicks or spells or something through one of these other neutral items uh, rather than try to get like 75 gpm through this neutral item like pick something else and use those stats to increase your gpm beyond that so supports love philosopher stone couple couple spell casters but most other heroes will not take it gossamer cape got buffed in 7.33c i think it was actually just a little underappreciated prior to that uh, but with other things getting nerfed and this one getting buffed people tried it out more and they realized like oh it actually it feels pretty nice to have this the 20 movement speed is nice to move around the map still and then this dodge chance is just really useful against certain heroes you know if you're having trouble with spell casters obviously it's not going to be useful and if you're having trouble with illusion heroes or summons then this is also not going to be that useful because there's so many attacks coming in dodging one out of all those attacks doesn't mean as much but there are games where you are against like a ta and uh she starts with like a meld strike typically to to really like bring you down and then finish you off and you're just going to dodge that every four seconds uh, so that's pretty useful as long as you're into those kind of heroes, um, but sometimes you're not, and then Gossamer Cape does not have much value. So um, it, it's hard for me to say whether you should or should not always take this, but uh, if you watch the pro scene and you keep an eye on their items, you, are, you will notice a lot of heroes are taking this to survive more of these early fights and to be in those early fights uh, by having that extra move speed. If you're having a hard time with magic damage rather than being auto attacked down, then you might take Vambrace, which used to be the most common, uh, commonly picked tier two item. I'd say it was like the best one, but then it got nerfed. It's still overall solid. You'll see it um, more from strength and intelligence heroes and anyone who just wants to survive. So even if you're like agility or universal, but you want to tank up, then you'll take this and stick it on strength. You'll get eight strength, which is a nice amount. And then you get 10 magic resistance, which is really good. Uh, part of the same reason a cult bracelet is so good. It's just making you a lot more resistant to spell damage or sorry, to magic damage. And that's, that's pretty nice right now when you're picking it at 17 minutes. Um, if you're an intelligence hero, you might take it because you want more uh, intelligence for the mana pool, some regen, but mainly this spell amp, uh, mainly like core intelligence heroes take it, like mid heroes take it for that. Supports tend to take something else if they want intelligence or mana regen in general, but uh, anyone looking for like damage from spells, then you might take this. You don't really see it agility as often because other items are better for uh, agility heroes are typically carry heroes, right? So they tend to take it. And then some agility heroes are like supports, but they usually stick it on strength for the, the survivability. Bullwhip is another great item. Uh, in particular, if you need mana regen, it is the best mana regen item that you can pick from the tier twos. And then you also get this movement speed free compared to like pig out from the pig pole. This one, you can just like whip yourself as you run around the map to move faster. You can whip allies and then you can use it aggressively as well in fights by hitting the enemies with it to slow them down. So that's great. It also has three HP regen, but that's not typically why you're taking it. It's uh, like if you just needed HP regen, something like Dragon Scale is actually better. Uh, this is, you know, mana and the move speed and then health is nice. Moving into the B tier, I just want to clarify again, these items are not strictly worse than S or A tier items. S and A tier items just tend to be good in more general cases. For B tier items, a lot of these are actually considered S tier items for very specific heroes in certain situations. So it's just... You know, it's just kind of hard to say, like, what, what's really an S, A, B tier item? I don't know. This is all semantic bullshit. So anyways, let's go into it. Pupil's Gift. If you need strength or intelligence, Pupil's Gift is pretty good. If you're a universal hero, Pupil's Gift sucks. It's plus seven. It doesn't say it here on this item. I don't know why. But universal heroes only get plus seven all stats 
from Pupil's Gift. That means they get a total of 21 stats. If you compare that to someone like Vambrace, you get 16 stats from Vambrace, but you also get an extra effect. Or if you take an item like Pig Pole, which is a tier one item, Pig Pole gives you plus six stats. So for Universal Heroes, Pupil's Gift is pretty bad unless you have like terrible options, you're not gonna take it. If you are an agility hero, you sometimes take it if you're just looking to tank up and get that 15 strength, 15 uh, intelligence. Uh, and in the same way, if you're an intelligence hero who wants strength, if you're a strength hero who wants intelligence, then Pupil's Gift is nice. In terms of wanting agility from Pupil's Gift, that's not usually the case. Uh, 15 agility is like two and a half armor, but if that's what you wanted, like, oh, I want armor for survivability, then like Ring of Aquila or Dragon Scale is gonna give you more armor. If you're an agility hero who's like, oh, I want agility because I'm gonna get more damage, you can't get agility from Pupil's Gift, so you're not gonna take it. So this is about tanking up or buffing up your mana pool. And as long as that's what you need, then it's really good. 15 in that category is a lot. Specialist Array is an item that has been slowly getting buffed and I'm seeing it more. To be honest, I don't feel like I fully understand the best case for Specialist Array. Um, if you're a universal hero, you might take Specialist Array even if you're melee. I've seen Void Spirits take it because you get the five all stats plus 12 raw damage. And you don't even get the passive, but I still see them take it. Maybe it's because they don't have like other options. I don't know. Uh, for ranged heroes, you get that. That's cool. Uh, 17 damage essentially from the all stats and then the 12 damage. And then that bonus where the, the attack split. The funny thing is though, is that if you're a ranged hero who cares about wave clear, you've probably bought it in the form of a Maelstrom or you're working towards it. But maybe you haven't. Maybe you went Dragonlance into some other stuff, Manta, and then the Special Array does help you like AOE a little bit more with two additional targets. So I do see it picked up a little bit more often, but many ranged heroes actually prefer Grove Bow with that 100 extra attack range and 20 attack speed. They don't even care about the magic amp a lot of the times, or if they do, um, it's like, oh yeah, I help out my like mid less track do a bit more damage. Cool. It's super nice on a hero like Muerta, like we mentioned earlier, who who gets all of this, right? Attack range, attack speed, and she's doing a lot of spell damage, so she, then she's buffing herself up as well. Uh, so certain heroes really like Grove Bow and will even hold on to it into the tier three, tier four category, just because uh, there's nothing really to replicate this. It is very, very good. And if you're someone like uh, Nick's Assassin, I've sometimes seen them take Grove Bow where they don't care about the attack range. They're really there for that magic amp. 15% more uh, is quite a lot. So it's usually for ranged heroes, but occasionally if you're like a very magic burst focused hero, you might take Grove Bow for the passive. Dragon scale is pretty simple to explain. You pick it when you're trying to be more resistant to physical damage. You get five armor, five HP regen. I, I don't really have much more to say to it than that. Afterburn is cool and all. It does 66 burn damage to your target. That's nice, uh, especially against buildings if you're pushing into it. Uh, but you don't have to think that hard on it, honestly. Um, you can a little like, oh, there's three targets. Let me hit one, then the next, then the next, that they're all affected by burn, and then focus one hero, and then reapply. Uh, when you're pushing buildings in particular, oh, okay, I'll hit one barracks, then I'll hit the other barracks, so they're both burning, and then the focus one. Like, you can do that, sure, but... In the end, no one's taking this typically because like, oh yeah, afterburn, that's what I need. It's it's about this armor and this HP regen. Ring of Aquila is a classic Dota 2 item. It is best on agility heroes who want some mana regen. Uh, that's kind of why you used to buy this item and now as a neutral item, it is why you pick this item. The armor aura is not bad. I have sometimes taken it on supports where I just kind of want armor and mana regen, then I'll take Ring of Aquila, and depending on like my other options, like maybe that was the most tempting thing. Um, but the, the aura does not stack, so if someone on your team has a Ring of Aquila, you're not gonna take it if you want mana regen and armor, you're then gonna go for something else. But if there's two like agility heroes in the game and they both want a Ring of Aquila, that's fine uh, because they're not taking it just for the mana regen and armor, they're taking it also for the, the variety of stats they get and they're gonna spend time apart from each other and they both want that, that's totally okay. Orbit Destruction is going to be best on physical right clickers, uh, especially anyone that already has some negative armor built into their, their kit. So like an Ember Spirit who built a Orb of Corrosion might pick up an Orb of Destruction. A Phantom Assassin who's got her Desolator now picks up an Orb of Destruction. It is very, very good as long as your team has that negative armor. As a support, I don't frequently take this, even if I'm like a Vengeful Spirit. And it's like, oh, I'll take Orb of Destruction to like 
further reduce the armor of the target for my you know physical damage carry like in theory that works but a lot of times for supports you shouldn't be putting yourself in a position to attack the enemy heroes because you're probably out of position like say you're a lich you're like oh I'll take armor orbit destruction right you're now out of position it's not really worth it so um unless it's very natural to your build like uh bounty hunter who's like going very aggressive i don't know maybe he'll take it because there is a slow to it and then the negative armor and he's already going to be in physical range a lot of times for that that stun then that's kind of okay but otherwise this is typically a core item eye of the vizier is your only option for cast range and it's great 125 range that is amazing on a lot of different supports and some cores but this is typically a support item uh, overall the max mana reduction is not an issue for certain heroes, and it's a massive issue for others. So take a look at your spell costs. Take a look at the items you've bought. When you've got like Glimmer, Four Staff, right? Those are expensive items, and then you already don't have a great mana pool, and you have expensive spells, then Eye of the Vizier might be too painful to take. Uh, if you build something like Arcane Boots that helps to offset the max mana reduction, that helps a lot. Or if you've bought other small mana items like a uh, a wand, um, you've got some kind of intelligence item, I don't even know, but like you got it, then that, that can be okay. Um, but typically you take Eye Vizier when you want cast range and you don't have mana pool issues. And then the max mana regen, or sorry, just the, the mana regen is just a, a nice benefit to this item. Vampire Fang seems to be the worst of the tier twos. It's the one I see the least right now. I have seen it on occasion for some carries who skip lifesteal. I've seen them take it for that. And some like Bristleback get lifesteal and spell lifesteal, but I have not seen him take it very often. I tend to see him take uh, one of these other items instead. So I don't know, it just seems to be in the worst place right now, or maybe people just haven't explored it enough yet, because actually it was one of the, it's one of the more busted ass items back when it came out. Um, but maybe now that you get to choose, there's some other ones that are just a little better at this time. I'm not fully sure. That's it for this one. Let me know if you really want like a tier three, tier four video. I, I just think it's harder, like I said earlier, because it becomes very specific to the heroes. And then tier five would just be total theory craft. I have only been in a handful of tier five games. I'd be talking out of my ass telling you guys which is like better or not. It's it's really hard to discuss this this one. Uh, for me, from tier three onwards, it, it very much is like, what do I need right now? Oh, if I just cast my spells and items more, that's really great. Then I'm going to take like Quickening Charm or like, oh, I, I really need more mobility because I can't move. You know, I'm going to take Ogre Seal Totem. You know, it's just kind of that idea of you just identify your current needs and issues against the enemy draft and what, what does your other teammates have? And you pick the best neutral item out of your five options from there. Uh, so I, I'm kind of leaning away from making a specific video on that, but if you guys really want it, let me know. Uh, otherwise, thank you for watching this. I hope it was helpful and I'll see you, uh, hopefully in another video.